Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and welcome to our not dinosaur month. Still working on the name. To start off this new month and new year of basics, let's look at the gigantic Meterpede. It's the king of creepy crawlies and one of my personal favorites, the Arthropleura. The first remains of Arthropleura would be recovered in 1849 at the entrance of a tunnel near Friedrichsthal, a small town in modern day Germany. This animal, alongside various other arthropods, discovered near the German district of Saarbrücken, would be described in 1854 by German paleontologists Hermann Jordan and Hermann von Mayer inside their work titled uh, Of the Crustaceans of the Coal Formation of Saarbrücken. This original species, which would become the type species of the genus Arthropleura, was named Arthropleura armata. These first remains of Arthropleura were extremely fragmentary, only including a few pieces of the animal's exoskeleton and a set of tracks. This might sound odd for such a large animal, but the lack of remains mostly come down to the composition of the creature. As an arthropod and relative to crustaceans, this animal had no bones to leave behind as fossils. So what fossils do exist of this creature are often limited to its carapace, or body armor or exoskeleton. But, like many arthropods, these exoskeletons will disarticulate, or fall apart, after the animal dies, making preservations of complete specimens extremely rare. Remains are often limited to fragmentary pieces of the carapace, legs, and larger fossils from the molted shells of Arthropleura. But even among these more complete specimens, there has been no evidence of the body, or more significantly, the head, which will lead to confusion we will discuss later. Besides these fossilized molted shells, tracks of Arthropleura found across the world have also provided invaluable insight into how this animal would have lived and how large they could become. The name Arthropleura can be translated from Latin and stems from the words arthro for joint and pleura for ribs, directly translating to jointed ribs, referencing the jointed body segments that made up Arthropleura's body and armor. Although this jointed nature is not wholly unique to Arthropleura, and is actually fairly common among other members of its group. Despite limited fossil evidence, a total of five species have been identified, shown here. Distinctions between each species are fairly minimal and, quite frankly, lacking. For example, Arthropleura cristata is only based off of a few leg fossils, very similar to the type species, as well as various tracks. However, the remains were found on the other side of the Atlantic, in the U.S. state of Illinois, providing justification for a new species. Arthropleura was an arthropod, a classification of invertebrates defined by their hardened exoskeleton exteriors. More specifically, Arthropleura was the namesake of its own family, the Arthropleuridae, and subclass, the Arthropleuridia. Focusing on the Arthropleuridia, this was a group of long-extinct arthropods, similar to modern-day millipedes, and are sometimes grouped into the same class, Diplopoda. Yet, they do have some characteristics that make them unique, particularly how their exoskeletons connect to their bodies. The Arthropleura was massive, being the largest terrestrial invertebrate in our world history, and being one of the largest arthropods of all time. It would reach lengths of between six to nine feet, or two to three meters, and reach about two feet or half a meter in width. Based on this size, 
Arthropleura would have weighed approximately 110 pounds, or 50 kilograms. While Arthropleura would only naturally stand a few inches off the ground, it has been proposed that this creature could rear onto its back legs to stand at up to 5 feet off the ground, most likely doing this for intimidation. One of the biggest mysteries around this creature is what they would have eaten. As previously mentioned, a head, and obviously a skull, has never been recovered, so scientists cannot analyze the jaws or teeth of this creature to determine what it probably would have eaten. An early study once claimed plants to be their primary diet, attributing this belief to the discovery of mosses and tree bark in what was believed to be the stomach of an Arthropleura. However, a reanalysis conducted by zoologist Otto Krauss and paleontologist Karsten Brockman determined this evidence to be false, and this plant material was merely near where Arthropleura would have died, distinct from the Arthropleura fossil itself. Despite this, based on the diets of modern millipedes, the pair still believe Arthropleura would be an herbivore, feasting on spores and plant debris it could reach. Its head would be covered by a round exoskeleton piece called a column, which would then be followed by rows of additional armor. Early depictions often display Arthropleura with a large rounded head, mistaking the column as the head itself, when in reality, the head would be much smaller and tucked under this column piece. The flat body of Arthropleura would be comprised of 30 jointed segments, which would then be covered in its distinct armor plating. This armor consisted of a row of plates along the center of its body, flanked on either side by a longer armor piece. This exoskeleton would completely cover its body and was only a few millimeters thick. Like many other arthropods, this exoskeleton most likely served as a first line of defense against would-be predators. The total number of legs for these creatures is unknown, but Krauss and Brockman suggested a ratio of eight pairs of legs to every six body segments, meaning they could range between 60 to over 100 individual legs, depending on the size of the specimen. Arthropleura would have lived throughout modern-day North America and Europe, particularly in countries like the United States, England, and Germany. It would have lived hundreds of millions of years ago, in a time period referred to as the Carboniferous Period, almost 350 million years ago. This was a time long before mammals and birds, with amphibians still continuing to develop, and reptiles being only in their infancy. Instead, the land was ruled by early arthropods, similar to some familiar bugs. The one foot or 40 centimeter long dragonfly, Meganeura, dominated the skies, while the human head sized spider, Mega Arachne, prowled the lush forests and swamps that covered the landscape. So a giant millipede was right at home. But how was such an environment possible? The lack of large land vertebrates certainly played a role, leaving arthropods to fill the niche of apex predators and dominant herbivores. But many attribute this growth to the abundance of oxygen. During the time of Arthropleura, Near the middle of the Carboniferous period, approximately 315 million years ago, oxygen levels had reached nearly 23% of the Earth's atmosphere, compared to today's 21. And by the end of the Carboniferous period, about 300 million years ago, this percentage had risen to a staggering 35%, due mostly to the extreme abundance of vegetation during this time. Exactly why oxygen levels led to bigger bugs is not fully understood. Some directly correlate the greater oxygen to allow for greater size. But others, like scientist Wilco Verberg, instead believe it was a survival mechanism 
to prevent young insects from dying of oxygen poisoning. It is important to note that this concept, often referred to as insect gigantism, is not as straightforward as it may appear. As illustrated in the works of Matthew Clapham and Jared Carr, it is very unlikely that oxygen alone resulted in this size increase. Instead, a variety of factors like predation, temperature, and competition all played a role in creating the perfect conditions for an insect takeover. Whichever the case, Arthropleura was able to thrive alongside other giant arthropods. At Arthropleura's size and with its body of armor, very few, if any, carnivores could hunt this creature at full growth. However, as oxygen levels declined and tropical environments decreased moving into the Permian period, Arthropleura and many other giant insects would eventually die out. The sentence millipede, but big, is certainly an enticing title for an animal, helping Arthropleura make quite a few appearances in modern media. Some of these roles include the 2005 documentary Walking with Monsters, 2006 television series Prehistoric Park, 2008 television series Primeval, 2015 video game Ark Survival Evolved, and most recently in the 2023 documentary Life on Our Planet. The Arthropleura was one of the earliest titans to roam the Earth's surface and showed just how weird early life on our planet was. Its durable armor and incredible size helped it survive in a competitive primal Earth and showed the resilience of arthropods even from the start. So maybe the next time you think there's nothing worse than whatever bug is messing with you, consider this creature and be sure those thoughts are thrown out of your noggin. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Arthropleura and if you've heard of this creature before the video kind of feel bad for any new viewers just wanting to hear about the cool new dinosaur facts and having to learn that this abomination once roamed our planet. Probably won't make the metrics of this video look good, but oh well. Next up, we've got the reptile seal of our primordial oceans, the Nothosaurus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.